2018 belong to artificial intelligence powering intelligent banking assistance? Can 2019 have AI power intelligent banking assistance but in a regional language? 2018 saw an explosion of digital banking. Can 2019 see the focus shift to behavioral banking? 2018 saw blockchain-based proof of concepts. Can 2019 unlock the true potential of blockchain? In this episode of Tech at Work with CNBC TV18.com, I, Reema Tendulkar, will take you through the top five fintech trends in India that will change the way you bank. Joining me today is Manish Chen, the partner and head digital strategy, fintech and innovation uh, of blockchain at KPMG. Uh, welcome to Tech at Work with Reema Tendulkar. Uh, Manish, you have wide experience, two decades uh, across Infosys and ICICI Bank and IBM. You're the best person to tell us the top five fintech trends for 2019. I think the top five fintech trends will start from simplification. The challenge is that with the digital world, a lot of complexity has come in. Look at the passwords. So many passwords we need to remember, and it becomes so complex in our daily life. So one side we say the digital is simplifying the things, other side we are complicating the things. So one thing that can take a shape in next year or 2019 is the digital identity. And if you take a supportive digital identity, why I'm saying supportive digital identity? When we say digital identity, people feel that it's Aadhaar. It's not about Aadhaar, it's about a digital identity which gives you a facial recognition. So look at it, if I take an app, if I log in through the app, by looking at my face, and that recognizes my face with the 7,000 facial features of mine using an AI, and it simplifies my login. That's where the inclusion of the entire country will happen in the digital era. So the simplification in the path to service is what is required using the digital identity. So digital identity is first trend, supportive digital identity is the first trend that I see that is going to happen. The second one is the uh, look at the voice and vernacular. Now, vernacular is the that is required in the country. Today, all the banking or any financial services to that matter is all available in English or maximum in Hindi. Whereas in the internet medium, the vernacular part is easily uh, taken and lot of content is available in vernacular languages in terms of entertainment and consumption. So. The other industries have picked up the vernacular, but financial services has not picked up. And I think that is where it is required to have the uh, vernacular languages for greater adoption. Unless we get into a vernacular and voice. And now with the, uh, everybody is having an assistant on their mobile phone, the voice can become a next uh, innovation, which can simplify the whole uh, life of the people. And the third trend which I see is uh, precision underwriting. When I mean precision underwriting is that Today, all underwriting, be it lending or insurance, since the data is not available, we add up the buffers and the cost is becoming higher. Or the expected loan is not given to the value where the value was expected to be given much more. The fourth trend which I am seeing is that digital moving to a behavioral bank, digital bank moving to a behavioral bank. Now, digital bank moving to behavioral bank means today digital is a form of giving a service. It can be on mobile, it can be on uh, desktop, or you can log in from here. That's a service, but it is not that intelligent enough to understand your behavior in terms of how are you saving, how are you spending, how are you borrowing, how are you securing your lives. But if you look at all this data is available. Now, if this data, if this digital data is combined together with AI and big data, you can definitely come up with a behavioral bank. And in fact, uh, recently, one of the banks in uh, South Africa has launched the first behavioral bank in the country. And with this behavioral bank, if we understand all the behavior of the people, the good financial behavior will be rewarded with respect to rewards, loyalties. And we have seen that that's happening in the credit card space, but not happening all across. If you look holistically, if you spend in SIP, mutual funds, or you invest in uh, insurance, or you and just save for our savings, continuous savings. All of the places, these are the clearly available information that is uh, there, and you can uh, build the saving behavior. And based on this behavior, a lot of businesses want to invest their uh, invest in here because every uh, business needs a good customer. And the fifth trend is uh, the blockchain. Blockchain in terms of provenance, which is the source to destination tracking, and 
the consortiums where multiple stakeholders of the financial value chain will come together so that they form a consortium of uh, uh, consortiums to provide a to actually leverage the blockchain services. So um, let's tackle these top five trends now. The first one is digital identity. So apart from facial recognition, is there any other way to establish a digital identity? And what are the benefits of it? So there are multiple ways of handling the digital identity. It can be through virus, it can be through a biometric, it can be through a thumb impression, or it can be a facial recognition. The best part of the facial recognition is that you have so many complex data sets that is available so that it is much more secure and then you exactly know that the overall face is there. Uh, the challenges with the thumb impression is that in India people go for Mehendi and uh, they apply Mehendi in that and many times the biometric fails for the authentication. So those kind of issues and challenges we have seen. But facial recognition is something which is very complex and it provides more secured part of it. And look at the uh, complexity, like debit card authentication. When you do a transaction in internet banking, the transaction happens and then it asks for the debit card. Now, if you're not carrying your card, you cannot complete the transaction many times. The grid is asking for a debit card. Now, if you have a digital identity over there and you can look at your face and it authorizes the transaction, that could be one simplification of doing a financial transaction. So these are the various places where you can look at how you simplify the financial transaction journey in digital banking. Okay. Uh, the other one you spoke about is banking in your regional language. Uh, now that's a bit perplexing because uh, fintech has actually been at the forefront of technology, but in this case, it's actually lagging because you spoke about how various different platforms, video platforms, for etc., et are already using regional uh, languages or are producing content in regional languages. What is the reason why fintech has not adopted regional languages so far and the progress that you see in 2019? I think uh, the Indian languages are complex, 22 different languages, and the kind of data sets that is available to understand those languages were not available that much. Also, a lot of focus happened in the past in terms of creating the banks into a digital model. So, model. So, creating a digital bank was the first thing, whether it internet banking, mobile banking, or providing the financial services on digital was the first focus. But going forward, the next focus will be on the vernacular side of it, vernacular and voice. Okay, and a little bit more about behavioral bank. You're saying it will be replicating the kind of loyalty program that credit card companies have set up with their customers? It is much more than the uh, credit card loyalty program okay. because what will happen is that it will create your financial behavior and good financial behavior will be recorded. It will become like a collateral for you for your future needs. So whenever you need any kind of a loan or whenever you need any kind of an offer or whenever you spend money, everything is, uh, be, uh, this becomes say, your collateral as your passport for a good financial behavior. So you take it as a holistic 360 degree view of your own financial behavior versus a credit card or transaction and a loyalty. So you're saying if I save more, my bank is going to give me better discounts, better rates, perhaps even on my home loan? That is one. And also you can get a discount from a furniture shop where he's going to give a better furniture because so you're a good customer. So he's going to tie in all the vendors. Yeah, so uh, one caveat here, it is all your data. With your consent, if that data is shared with others, then definitely you can get those benefits. Have you seen an offtake of behavioral bank so far in 2018? So 2018, behavioral bank per se was not there, but definitely digital banks were there. Now 2019, we'll see uh, uh, birth of uh, behavioral banks and uh, one bank is already coming up in uh, South Africa but 2019 will see a lot of work happening by fintechs in the behavioral side of it. Okay uh, and then uh, the other point you spoke about was precision underwriting uh, which involves in agri-tech lending which involves uh, micro insurance. Um, how different is this going to be from your traditional lending? Say, say how different can agri-tech lending be compared to traditional lending to farmers? And how different is your micro-insurance compared to the travel insurance that I take for three, four days? So look at it, the uh, two parts. Let me take it in two parts. The first part is that uh, lending part of it. Now, if you take a crop loan, and the priority sector lending in India is a big chunk of the overall portfolio for banking industry, if you look at the priority sector lending and in the crop loan, in that crop loan, 
today you would look at the financial behavior or financial repayment behavior of a farmer. Whereas the data that is available is that the weather data in that particular location, the soil data, the quality of a soil, the nutrition value of a soil, uh, the satellite data, uh, all sorts of open uh, data sets are available because of open digital economy and you can easily tr get this data and if you look at the lending, you can find out the whether you can lend much more compared or lesser. Even you can track to that extent that in that plot where you are lend lending, is it a mobile tower is there or not? Is there a waterbed inside that uh, uh, land or not? So that is the kind of a data that is available to you do a precise lending rather than just estimating and saying that, okay, I'll give a, a loan to a certain extent only. Okay. So that way, the much more loan can be availed by the people compared to what is their eligibility today. Okay, and micro insurance? And the micro insurance, if you look at it, Micro insurance, uh, again, is a precision lending. Insurance is all about risk. And the risk is calculated based on the data sets that's available. So if the data sets are not available, what people do is that they put a buffer onto that and the insurance premium is increased. But now if you have the data available, it's about uh, securing a moment in the life. For example, if you go to uh, a vacation and your house is locked for three days, you want a theft insurance for three days. Now, which period of the year you are traveling? Is it that in the year surrounding everybody is traveling? Is it a vacation period? Or is it a period of uh, you are going one of uh, uh, times? So these are the various data sets that is available now, uh, which can be considered to give a insurance only for three days. Mm. So that's kind of a micro insurance, which can help you with larger data sets but much lesser premium. So people will get benefit with those insurance where you are paying much lesser for the same risk which you used to pay much higher. So Manish, today we already have travel insurance, right? What variables does it take into account today? And what will change? So travel insurance today, uh, you take it, it gives the, uh, typically in a flight and all, you have the travel insurance. But you don't have a travel insurance for, if you take a, uh, now Uber and, uh, uh, the uh, aggregator bookings are also started offering the uh, uh, data for, uh, for the insurance, micro insurance. But if you take it, for example, if IoT sensors are there tomorrow in the car and you are driving from point A to point B and you need insurance only for that point rather than doing a general insurance for the whole year. So you, if you drive your car, say, five times in a month, then you will do a micro insurance for five times rather than doing a full year insurance and paying some... 10,000 rupees. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so 2018 was the year where cryptocurrencies became the rage, but then we realized as the year progressed that it's actually the technology blockchain behind it, which is uh, the key thing, and it's going to be instrumental in disrupting a lot of industries. A lot has been spoken about blockchain in the financial industry. Uh, if you could tell us why is it going to be a top trend to watch in 2019? See, blockchain as a technology is built uh, based on uh, currency and trust because it's all evolved from the uh, cryptocurrency. The point is that it's a platform which multiple parties needs to come on the on board on that platform so that if you have to really leverage the benefit of the blockchain technology, all the parties needs to come together. It could be a buyer, seller, buyer bank, seller bank, transportation, uh, uh, shipment companies, everybody has to come together so that when the movement of goods happens and the financial transactions also moves, they move hand in hand. And then any change in the terms and contract uh, conditions is informed to all the stakeholders at any point in time so that there is a trust and transparency built. It's not because of the blockchain technology trust comes in, but since the way it is managed based on the technology, that's where the trust and transparency gets built over the period of time. People feel that blockchain means trust, but it is more about a process that is built leveraging blockchain technology where the transparency comes in and with the transparency trust comes in. So that's how the blockchain is evolving. Uh, banks have tried between the banks to do a trade finance transaction, but the entire ecosystem of uh, uh, will come as a consortium in 2019. So that's what we are seeing. Thank you, Manish, uh, for your time. Uh, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Tech at Work. We'll be back with another episode. Stay tuned.